Hello my dear friends, I welcome you all to our channel that is Best Notes Tutorials and uh, today I am here with day 16's MCQs. I hope our last videos are uh, giving you all some enlightenment regarding past year question papers and uh, I wish all the best to all the participants who are preparing sincerely for the different examinations and uh, if you require any help from our side if you are not having notes or any idea of anything okay just let us know we will make video on that particular topic in due time so without wasting time let's begin today's class and please be attentive and be ready with pen and paper to write your scores okay let's begin question number one First question is related to this line. So listen to it very carefully. Okay. A view from the bridge was a famous two-act play written by Arthur Miller in 1955. It was then changed into a one-act play. So your question number one is related with it. It asks, in which state is a view from the bridge set? Option A, Texas, Option B, California, Option C, New York, and Option D, Arizona. So here your option goes with New York, which is Option C. In highlighter, we get to see the whole play is set in Brooklyn, New York City. This is the city where all the main events happen that eventually lead to the climax. Question number two, where are Marco and Rodolfo from? Option A, Spain, Option B, Germany, Option C, France and Option D, Italy. Here, Option D, that is Italy, is correct. Marco and Rodolfo is from, oh, sorry, are from Italy, okay. Highlighter says, Marco and Rodolfo both came, both come from Sicily, Italy. Sicily is part of Italy. Okay. They arrive illegally in America to work for their family. They seek refuge at Eddie Carbone's house. Marco had solely come to America for the purpose of providing for his family, whereas Rodolfo has come to be an American citizen. Question number three, what is Al Freire's job? Option A, longshoreman. Option B, immigration officer. Option D, judge. And option D, sorry, option C, judge. And option D, lawyer. Here, Al Freire is a lawyer who counsels Eddie throughout the play. He is a, com a commentator, a narrator and a character in the play. He is the second protagonist because he also works alongside Eddie to lead to the final events of the play. He watches all of the action from Brooklyn Bridge as indicated in the title. Who is Catherine in love with? Option A. Marco. Option B. Louis. Option C. Alfieri. And Option D. Rodolfo. Here. Option D is correct, that is, Catherine is in love with Rodolfo. Let's see the highlighters. Catherine falls for Rodolfo as soon as he arrives. Rodolfo has the same feelings for Catherine. He demonstrates, he demonstrates this when he sings Paper Doll, at which Eddie gets angry due to its lyrics. Let's move to question number five. Why does Eddie kiss Rodolfo? Option A, to make Catherine notice him. Option B, he wanted to. Option C, to show that Rodolfo really is homosexual. Option D, he is drunk and so is not conscious of what he is doing. Here, option C is correct that 
Rodolfo is homosexual. Therefore, he kissed Eddie. Let's see the highlighters to understand the answer more clearly. Eddie arrives home drunk with five bottles of wine. He sees Catherine come out of the bedroom adjusting her skirt just when Rodolfo appears right behind her. The audience and mainly Eddie believe that they have just returned from the bedroom after having sexual intercourse. Eddie realizes this and tells Rodolfo to pack his bags and get out. He then kisses Catherine and Rodolfo. He then kisses Catherine and Rodolfo. The double kiss is very shocking to the audience and to Briotrice who later finds him finds out from Catherine. Question number six. How long do Marco and Rodolfo stay at Eddie's house? Option A, two weeks. Option B, six weeks. Option C, one year. And option D, three months. Here, option B, that is six months, is correct. Both brothers stay in New York for six months until they get captured and taken to Alfredi by the immigration bureau officer. Eddie betrays them by calling the immigration officer right after he gets advice from Alfredi from Catherine who tells him to put it out of your mind. Question number seven. What does Marco accuse Eddie for doing? Option A, betraying him. Option B, robbing his family. Option C, killing his children. And option D, torturing his brother. Here, answer C is correct. That is killing his children. Let's see the highlighters. As soon as Marco comes downstairs, held by the immigration officer, he points at Eddie and screams, That one, he killed my children. That one stole the food from my children. This causes Eddie to get very angry and tells him the good things he, had, he has been doing. He is crazy. I gave them the blankets off my bed. Six months, I kept them like my own brothers. Let's move to question number eight. What does Catherine call Eddie on her wedding day when he forces Beatrice not to go? Option A, a pig. Option B, a mouse. Option C, a rat. Option D, a dog. So here option C, that is a rat, is correct. Let's go to clear. Let's go to clear the answer through highlighters. Beatrice is ready for Catherine and Rodolfo's wedding when Eddie tells her not to go. Beatrice says that she is going for her sister Eddie, for her sister and Eddie tells her, now if that's more to you than I am, then go, but don't come back. Catherine then enters the room in her wedding gown and gets angry at Eddie. How can you listen to him? This rat he belongs in the sewer. He bites people when they sleep. He becomes, he comes when nobody looking and poisons decent people. In the garbage, he belongs. Okay, so these were the words of Catherine. And uh, I hope the answer is clear to you. How does Eddie die? Option A, Catherine kills him. Option B, he is stabbed during a struggle. Option C, he gets shot. Option D, Rodolfo kills him. Here, option B is correct. That is, he is stabbed during a struggle. Just when Marco, tell, Marco calls Eddie an animal, Eddie gets out a knife and aims at Marco. They both fight for the knife and 
Marco turns the blade inward towards Eddie while it is in his hand and using pressure stabs him. He dies in Beatrice's arms. Question number 10. What item does Eddie tell Catherine to change when Marco and Rodolfo arrive at their house? Option A. Skirt. Option B. High heels. Option C. Necklace. And option D. Dress. So here, high heels is correct answer. Eddie tells Catherine to change her high heels when Marco and Rodolfo arrived. As soon as Marco and Rodolfo arrive at Eddie's house, Catherine is seen wearing high heels in order to impress Rodolfo. When Eddie asks her why she is wearing the high heels, she replies, I just figured for tonight, trying to make Eddie realize she was wearing the high heels for the occasion, when instead she was wearing them for Rodolfo. Eddie realizes this and immediately tells Catherine to change them. Friends, please keep all these incidences in your mind because answer will come when you remember the things related to it. Alright, because if I tell you just answer, then you might forget. Alright, so when I am narrating the situation, please be focused so that it will leave imprint in your mind and you will never forget during ex during examination as well question number 11 who narrates the play option a catherine option b rodolfo option c ad and option d alfieri here option d is correct that is alfieri narrates the play let's see the highlighters Alfieri is the law who Eddie goes to see in order to stop his niece getting married to Rodolfo, who Eddie believes is marrying her for an American work permit. Question number 12. In, in glass minegri, which glass animal does Laura give him? give Jim sorry option a beer option b lion option c horse and option d unicorn here option d that is unicorn is correct in class me agree which animal that is unicorn the uh, unicorn is given by lakra to Jim question number okay let's see the highlighters the unique Sorry, the unicorn is a symbol of Laura's uniqueness. <coughs> Question number 13. Where does the play take place? Option A, New York. Option B, St. Louis. Option C, Chicago. And option D. Option D is Cleveland. So here, option B, that is St. Louis, is correct. The play is taking place in at St. Louis okay let's see the highlighters tom starts that he left st louis in the final monologue of the play question number 14 what did jim call laura in high school option a green leaves option b blue roses option c red roses and option d lovely laura here b is correct that is blue roses he thought she said blue roses when she really said she had pleurosis. Question number 15. Who is Tom's favorite author? Homer, Kurt Vonnegut, option C, D. H. Lawrence and option D. Allen Ginsberg. Here option C is correct that is D. H. Lawrence. Amanda takes that horrible book by Mr. Lawrence back to the library. Question number six. Which poet does Tennessee Williams quote at the beginning of the play? Option A. Allen Ginsberg. Option B. Charles Bukowski. Option C. Emily Dickinson. And option D. E. E. 
Cummings. So here option D is correct. That is E E Cummings, eighteen seventy four to eighteen seventy five. Option D is correct. That is E E Cummings, eighteen seventy four to eighteen seventy five. Williams quotes E. E. Cummings at the beginning of the play. Option, sorry, highlighters. Let's see highlighters. Tennessee Williams was a huge fan of Cummings. Freedom of a struggle. Sorry, not a struggle, a style. Okay, Cummings, freedom of style. Question number seventeen. O'Neill's father earned a considerable reputation for him in what field? Option A, business. Option B, law. Option C, acting. And option D, medicine. So here, acting is the correct option. James O'Neill made a fine living portraying the court of Monte, sorry, Monte Cristo. He felt, however. That he had compromised himself artistically by selling out for commercial success. Next question number eighteen is: Neil O'Neill had three wives. Which of the following was not one of them? Agnes, Ona, Kathleen, Carlota. Here, Agnes is incorrect. Kathleen too. And Carlota as well. The correct answer is Una. All right. These all three were wife of O'Neill, but not Una. Catherine was the first. That marriage was brief. Then, then comes Agnes. Then Carlota. Una was his daughter. Okay, Una was his daughter. So keep this thing in mind. The name is so unique you can remember it very easily. Option nineteen, sorry, question number nineteen. O'Neill's daughter married a famous older man. In what fields did this man earn his reputation? Option A, entertainment. Option B, politics. Option C, sports. And option D, Wall Street. So correct option goes. Option A, that is entertainment. O'Neill's daughter married older man who was engaged in entertainment business. Let's see the highlighters. Una, his only daughter, married Charlie Chaplin. This is you can remember it very nicely, isn't it? Old man whom Una married. Okay, his name was Charlie Chaplin. Eugene Junior committed suicide. Charlie Chaplin, Eugene. Junior committed suicide. Okay. His other son Shane experienced many problems, mostly with substance abuse. Okay, nineteen is clear, I guess. Option. Let's move to question number twenty. O'Neill spent O'Neill spent some time in a sanitarium, recuperating. From a serious illness, what was it? Option A, tuberculosis. Option B, heart problems. Option C, cancer. And option D, substance abuse. Here, tuberculosis is the correct answer. O'Neill spent some time in a sanitarium because of tuberculosis. The plot of Long Day's Journey dramatizes the illness, among other problems. This illness, that is tuberculosis, all right. He was suffering from tuberculosis, and other problems were also there. But here, in particular question, you have to write tuberculosis. One of O'Neill's best known work is the Iceman Comet. What does the Iceman represent? Option A, death. Option B, war. Option C, disease. And option D, poverty. Here, death is correct. Iceman represents death. Question number twenty-two. O'Neill was very proud of his work experiences prior to becoming a writer. What work did he do? Option A, soldier. Option B, seaman. Option C, farmer. 
and option D rancher. Here option B is correct that is seaman. Let's see the highlighters. He was an able-bodied seaman. Many of his plays are set at sea. Let's move to question number 23. Which of O'Neill's plays was not produced until after his death? Option A. Long Day's Journey. Option B. Desire Under the Elms. Option C. Morning Becomes Electra. Option D. The Hairy Ape. Here, option A, that is, Long Day's Journey is correct. Long Day's Journey was autobiographical. It was not produced until after his death at his own request. Option 20, sorry, question 24. Which play was written by O'Neill as a resemblance, sorry, remembrance of his brother? Anna Christie, A Moon for the Misbegotten, Option C, Marco Millions, and Option D, Beyond the Horizon. So here, Option B, that is, A Moon for the Misbegotten is correct. Let's see the highlighters. Poor Jamie didn't do too well in life. O'Neill's older brother drank himself to death, more or less. Question number 25. Uncharacteristically, O'Neill's wrote this light-hearted piece. Option A, The Great God Brown. Option B, Bound East for Cardiff. Option C, The Emperor Jones. Option D, A Wilderness. Here, option D, that is A Wilderness, is correct. It's a look at the happy-go-lucky youth that he might have wanted but did not have. Friends, by this we have completed day 16's MCQs. I hope the points are clear to you. We will move towards day 16's MCQs as well. Till then, please wait. Hello my dear friends. So today we are going to complete day 17's MCQs. And uh, please keep on revising the work that we have already completed in past days. Utilize your time constructively so that you won't regret later on. So let's begin with question number one. What type of novel is A Tale of Two Cities? Option A. Psychological novel. Option B. Situation novel. Option C. Gothic novel. And Option D, historical novel. So here, option D is correct. That is, it is a historical novel. Let's see the highlighters to make it clear. A historical novel takes place in a historical period before the author was born. The history is invented, but the background is based on real events. Other examples are Tall Toys, War and Peace, and Walter Scott's Ivalo, sorry, Ivaho, Ivanho, okay. Dickens studied the French Revolution, a history, to prepare himself. What, sorry, who wrote this essay? Option A, William Hazlitt. Option B, Thomas Hopes. Option C, Thomas Carlyle. And option D, Olive, sorry, Oliver Goldsmith. So here, Thomas Carlyle is the correct answer. He studied French Revolution that was written by Thomas Carlyle in order to write this novel. A lot of details in French are based on fragments of this essay. Dickens have visited France and read books, read works by French authors. Carlyle opposed to the uh, opposed the methods of the radical republicans who killed a lot of people via the guillotine. guillotine. Okay, guillotine is a device where uh, people are beheaded. Okay, 
इन हिंदी वी कॉल इट सर को धड़ से अलग करना ओके दैट इज कॉल्ड गिलोटीन एंड इन फ्रांस इट हैपन टू सो मेनी पीपल दिस ओपिनियन इज इकोड इन अ टेल ऑफ टू सिटीज ऑल दो डिकेंस अग्रीड डिकेंस अग्रीड विद द आइडिया ऑफ लिबर्टी इक्वालिटी एंड फ्रटर्निटी क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री द ओपनिंग सेंटेंस कंटेंस वन हंड्रेड एंड एटीन वर्ड्स विच स्टाइलिस्टिक डिवाइस डिड डिकन्स यूज इन इट यूफेमिजम पैराडॉक्स आर्केजम एंड मेटाफॉर सो ह्यूर लिटरी डिवाइस वॉज यूज दैट इज पैराडॉक्स ओके लेट्स सी द हाईलाइटर्स इट वॉज द बेस्ट ऑफ टाइम्स इट वॉज द वर्स्ट ऑफ टाइम्स इट वॉज द एज ऑफ विजडम इट वॉज द एज ऑफ फुलिसनेस बेस्ट वर्स्ट विजडम फुलिसनेस एक्सेट्रा आर पैराडॉक्स वी नो वॉट इज पैराडॉक्स पैराडॉक्स मीन्स वेन टू स्टेटमेंट्स आर गिवेन आइरोनिकल स्टेटमेंट्स ओके विच आर करेक्ट एट द सेम टाइम ओके पैराडॉक्सिकल सेंटेंसेस और वॉट इज पैराडॉक्स इन सिंपल लैंग्वेज मीन्स आइरोनिकल थिंग्स ओके आइरोनिकल स्टेटमेंट्स these contradictory ideas are used to express an underlying truth so this is literary device where we use contradictory ideas in order to express the truth question number 4 in this story the two cities the two cities the title refers to are london and paris london and berlin new york and los angeles and option d paris and nice here option a that is london and paris is correct these two cities were under a lot of stress during this time period britain had just lost its colonies to america and the british and french were not very fond of each other not to mention the impending revolution in france this we have learned in this we have seen in so many um you know historical situations where whoever is powerful they have governed the place okay so and the uh, powerful people used to used to target those places which were very resourceful all right they they did not go to the place where there is nothing all right they had say for example britishers they had come to india in order to get trade and commerce but their another motive later on they had changed their motive <clears throat> from trade and commerce to govern the land because our country was full of resources okay spices were um in abundance trees okay and uh, not only that our very culture was very rich because of which we were able to come out of any situation all right but that was destroyed by britishers right from the core all right they looted our money but we were able to generate money again because of our system all right but they understood it and they destroyed our culture because of which india has become poor and now we are struggling to come out of that situation so here what i wanted to tell you is that whoever is powerful they are going to rule the place and they will choose those places which are resourceful okay what kind of people were sir walter elliot and his daughter elizabeth and mary option a cold and ignorant cheerful and pleasant option d proud self centered and extravagant option d rude and arrogant so here option c is correct that is so walter elliot and his daughters elizabeth and mary were proud self centered and extravagant at the beginning of persuasion the elliot families have to leave kill kilich hall because of sir walter elliot's debts 
he and his eldest daughter feels they must maintain the standard of living appropriate for a baronet at all costs the world must still be impressed by the eliots by kellynch hall here baronet is a party okay which is organized and uh, this was gathering where people used to show off their wealth and especially ladies used to look for their life partners question number 6 who is lady russell option a lady eliot's mother option b sir walter eliot's sister annie eliot's godmother and option d lady eliot's sister so here option c is correct that is lady russell was annie eliot's grand uh, sorry godmother lady russell lives close to kellynch hall and was the closest friend of lady eliot after lady eliot dies uh, lady russell tries to look after eliot lady eliot's three daughters elizabeth ignores her advice and mary marries a match considered suitable for an eliot of kellynch hall annie eliot cares about her and listens to her question number 7 how old was any eliot when she first fell in love with frederick wentworth option a 20 option b 17 option c 19 and option d 18 so here option c that is 19 is correct answer she was of 19 years when she got married i mean sorry fell in love with frederick Let's see the highlighters. Frederick Wentworth had just uh, started his novel career, and was staying with his brother Edward, a curate in the area. Frederick Wentworth wanted to marry Annie Elliot, but she was persuaded to refuse him by Lady Russell. Lady Russell did not consider that an insolvent young seaman was a suitable match for an Elliot of. kellynch hall question number 8 why does captain wentworth return to the area option a to stay with his sister option b to stay with his mother option c to stay with his brother and option d to stay with friends here option a is correct to stay with his sister highlighter says admiral and mrs croft have rented kellynch hall from sir walter eliot sophie croft is frederick's wentworth sister admiral croft and frederick's wentworth frederick wentworth have just paid off ships after the battle of trafalgar this is related to history battle of trafalgar so you can search for it but what is important that we have included here question number 9 why are the musgrove family so eager to meet captain wentworth option a to see him as a match for one of his daughters one of their daughters option b their son was a man ship midshipman on his ship option c they feel a close uh, friendship with admiral and mrs croft option d they have a strong sense of curiosity here option b is correct their son was a midshipman on his ship richard musgrove who died at sea was a midshipman on the laconia captain wentworth's ship for 6 months the only letters his mother ever received from him were written during that period and must have been written under captain wentworth's influence let's see the highlighters richard musgrove who died at sea was a midshipman on the laconia captain wentworth's ship for 6 months the only letter his mother ever received from him were written 
during that period and must have been written under Captain Wentworth influence. Let's move to question number 10. Why do the Musgrove family, Captain Wentworth and Annie Elliot, visit Lyme? Here, option A is because Mary Musgrove wants to go. Option B, Charles Musgrove has been ill. Option C, they have heard it is beautiful. Option D, to visit Captain Wentworth's friend. So here option D is correct, that is to visit Captain Wentworth's friend. Captain Wentworth's friend, that is Captain Harville, was injured in the Battle of Trafalgar and is recuperating in Lyme with his family. Let's move to question number 11. How is Lusa Musgrove injured? Option A, she fell down steps. She falls down steps. Option C. She jumps from the sea wall. Option C. She is hit by a carriage. Option D. She falls from a horse. So here right option is option B. She jumps from the sea wall. Okay. Let's see the highlighters. Captain Wentworth has told Lusa that he only basically admires a strong and self-confident woman. Lusa is trying to impress him with her strength and determination and asks him to catch her when she jumps. He does not catch her in time and she hits her head on the stone jetty. Question number 12. Who is the year of Kellynch Hall? Option A, Walter Elliot. Option B, Mr. William Elliot. Option C, Mr. James Elliot. And option D, Mr. William Russell. Eo means successor. Okay, who will be the next kin? Okay, of the Kellynch Hall, this family. Walter Elliot is wrong answer. Option B is correct, that is Mr. William Elliot. Mr. E. William Elliot is going to be the next successor of this family. Question uh, sorry, let's see the highlighters. As Sir Walter Elliot has no sons, his nephew William Elliot must inherit the property. Some years earlier, Mr. Elliot insulted Mr. Walter and Elizabeth Elliot by marrying a rich lady who Sir Walter did not consider to be a suitable match for. An Elliot of Kellynchworth, Kellynch Hall. Mr. Elliot's wife died, however, and he decided to resume contact with his family. Let's move ahead. Who does Annie Elliot marry? Option A, Captain Wentworth. Option B, Mr. Elliot. Option C, Captain Benwink. Option D, Edward Wentworth. So here... Option A is correct, that is Captain Wentworth. Annie Elliot married Captain Wentworth. Let's see the highlighters. Lady Russell wants Annie Elliot to marry Mr. Elliot so that she can return to Kellynch uh, Hall eventually. Annie neither trusts nor likes Mr. Elliot and finds out that he has run out of money and wants to stop so Walter Elliot from marrying again and fathering an ear. So finally ignores Sir Russell's sorry Lady Russell's advice and marries Captain Wentworth, who is now rich and solvent. Question number fourteen Indians are firstly divided into two different religions and then different castes. So to which caste does Ananya the female protagonist belongs. Option A, Kshatriya. Option B, Shudra. Option C, Vaishya. And option D, Brahmins. So here, Brahmin is correct. And uh, here, see the highlighters. To be precise, Tamil Brahman or Tam Braham, Tamil Brahmins are one of the high ranked castes in India. 
they have strict prohibitions on non-vegetarian food and drinking alcohol stuff but despite this she used to eat meat and drink on her visit to topaz with krish she said that she didn't practice being a tamilian brahmin let's move to question number 15 what was the title conferred on ananya swaminathan by seniors option a best girl in freshers batch option b toppers of college option c best student in freshers batch and option d toppers topper of class so here option c is correct as a student she was the best okay according to krish good looking girls were rare in the iit since girls weren't selected for their looks but because they were faster than 99.99 percent girls all over india so she was conferred title of best girl in freshers batch why would any guy want to be only friends with a girl it is like agreeing to be near a dash cake and never eat it it's like sitting in a dash car and not driving it only wimp do that what will go with the blanks option a strawberry racing strawberry and racing option b strawberry luxury option c chocolate luxury and chocolate racing so here it is chocolate and racing chocolate uh, it is like agreeing to be near a chocolate cake and never eat it and here it's like sitting in a racing car and not driving it okay she had been proposed to till their visit to topaz by 10 iitns indian institute of technology that is a full form of iit and she saw a safe zone kind of guy in krish so she asked him that can they only be friends listening to this he quoted thought provoked his mind quoted thought provoked in his mind read the following conversation read the following conversation ananya what's your choice krish i want to go to wpm now what was the wpm where krish wanted to work option a whoever pays more option b west side and pantaloons manufacturing option c wipro products marketing and option d windows premier marketing so here correct option is whoever pays more krish wasn't too gritty for a job job he wanted to become a writer but only when he has earned enough so he wanted to join a company whoever pays more okay when did krish and ananya first have their sexual intercourse option a a day before placements option b while studying option c one week after convocation option d two weeks after their kiss your correct option is option d two weeks after their kiss when he explained her that he cannot be just friends with a girl ananya came closer to him and kissed him before she could realize what stupidity she had done she ran out of the room like this one thing led to another and they had sex within 2 weeks question number 19 who used to sit to the right hand side of krish in the classroom option a ankur option b ananya option c mohit option d kanyashree so here option c is correct that is mohit mohit now five mohits is correct answer let's see the highlighters 
there Ananya used to sit in the front row like all the A's. She used to sit between the two boys, Ankur and Aditya, who had proposed to her but were rejected. Kanyashri used to sit to the left of Krish and the five Mohits, all from different states of India, used to sit to the right. Was Krish a virgin before his first casual intercourse with Ananya? Option A, yes. Option B, no. Here, option B is correct, that is no. Krish was not a virgin before he had intercourse with Ananya. Let's see the highlighters. Krish told Ananya after his first intercourse with the Ananya that he had a girlfriend in IIT. She was a professor's daughter. He had requested that Krish leave her and in return he made him graduate earlier. Here the professor had requested Krish to leave daughter in bargain to graduate him earlier okay question number 21 what did he write on the location preference part of his Citibank new employee form option a Mumbai option B Delhi option C both Chennai and Delhi option D Chennai here option C is correct both Chennai and Delhi He was in a neck deep trouble since Ananya insisted upon have making him write Chennai first since she had posted there, she was posted there, but his parental affection made him write Delhi. So at last he wrote Delhi or Chennai. Same preference. Question number twenty two. When was Robert Burns born? Option A, 18, sorry, 1759, 1798, 1886, and 1990. So here, Robert Burns was born in the year 1759. He was born, Robert Burns was born on January 25th, 1759, in Alloway on the River Doon. He was Scotland's national poet. How long did he spend, spend in the city he moved to after his first book of poems was published? Option A, 6 years. Option B, 7 years. Option C, 4 years. And option D, 3 years. So here option A is correct, that is 6 years. Robert Burns spent six years in the city he moved to after his first book of poems was published. Let's move to the highlighters. He moved to Edinburgh. He had a second book of poems published during this time. After his marriage, he turned home and worked on the farm for a while. Question number 24. Which of these is not a song written by Robert Burns? Option A, Old Lang Sin. Option B, Red Red Rose. Option C, Coming Through the Array. Option D, All Through the Night. Here, option D is correct. That is All Through the Night. All Through the Night is a Wells song. Okay. Let's move to the last question. That is 25. What tradition dish is eaten at Burns Night festivities? Option A. Cookies. Option B. Sandwich. Option C. Samtos. Option D. Higgis. Here, option D is correct. That is Higgis. When he Higgis is when Higgis is brought in the bagpipes are played. So you have to keep in mind, Higgis is the correct answer. By this, we have completed two days MCQs. We will move towards days 18 and day 19 MCQs in our next video. Till then, prepare well, friends. 
and uh, wholeheartedly you should work in order to get through this examination our channel's best wishes are with you all thank you let us know your queries we will be happy to hear areas where we have to improve thank you so much